All right, guys, Joey here from Epic Cards and Games, and we're here at the Game Master Tournament of Power. Uh, I guess you'll, you you split in the finals, right? Yeah, I did. You didn't? Okay. Didn't want to play any more rounds. We have Garrison really. Bratton doing the deck profile for us. You want to tell us what you played? Yeah, sure. Uh, me, uh, Caleb, and our other teammate, Nick, um, we all played the same, uh, same deck, Pan. Mm -hmm. uh, very similar lists. Our lists were only about one card off and then about two cards off in our side, so very similar. Um, I got top eight and champion over here split, split in the finals, uh, so it performed pretty well. And then we had one bubble out, unfortunately, as well, so very, very close What call. happened, Nick? <laughs> 17th place, 17th place, top cut 16. Anyways, this was a 40-man um, tournament, and uh, we did four rounds, best of three, so we did siding, and then we did a top 16 cut where we did single elimination from there, so. I'll go ahead and go into the profile. Cool. We played uh, Pan. Mm -hmm. um, there's four uh, double shot Vegeta and four Topos. You play these because they're like the best defensive cards for red, and it just allows you to play a really grindy matchup with Pan. So way to trigger Pan on your opponent's turn? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. You summon it on your opponent's turn, and you get the trigger. So um, what you want to be doing with Pan is you want to get a trigger on your turn, and then a trigger on their turn, and then a trigger on your turn, and just keep keep following yeah. that, and you grind advantage uh, and beat most decks that way. Just want to use Pan as much as possible. Right, exactly. Um, our one drops are three Saiyan Kaba, and four Russian Warrior Pan. This was uh, a one difference between our lists. I played four and three versus their, they played three and four. Um, they really like, uh, the, the deck doesn't need ever need to awaken, so like awakening isn't a huge deal, so that's why they played four Russian Warrior over the three Kaba, because they valued the defense better in a grindier matchup. Mm -hmm. um, this card is just super insane for defense and for like uh, early plays and stuff. Um, and for like whenever you get another pan trigger and you just have an open mana, like say you have three mana and you want to hold up two for a topo, you can just use one for a pan and you're getting value off of that. Um, you have to play it smart, but it's a great card. Uh, two drops. There's unfortunately only uh, one two drop. Uh, in the game that's really worthwhile playing for this deck because it's the only two drop that's 1500 but fortunately it's also a really good card in general uh, goes to 20k when you get the pan trigger you get the draw and it's a crit um, you can also hit it off your chain attack trunks which we'll get to that you can evolve the chain attack trunks right that, that's also a huge one is being able to uh, hit hit chain attack trunks on turn three by evolving it and keeping up the mana which is really strong um, the other three drop uh, three drops we have four super saiyan three Son Goku. This card is nuts in this deck. Um, you just draw every single turn with it when you have it. Um, it d people can't stall you out because even if you're unawakened, you can uh, get a uh, get the get its trigger on Pan, so Pan can threaten awakened leaders, and this can threaten the leader, and then it goes back to your hand. Um, so essentially, you just drew a card off this and attacked them twice for for no disadvantage, and so nobody can really ever stall you out because of this card. Um, Next three drop is three Fearless Pans. Uh, because of the defensive package where we're building this big board state playing defensive, um, we a lot of times will amass large boards and Fearless Pan uh, just closes games or just puts games in a position where you won't lose if you put so much pressure on them that you force them to use a lot of cards out of their hand. It's also a barrier blocker, which is very relevant for surviving um, in the late game. Uh, this come and come and clutch when you just need to get that one essentially negate out, right? Um, yeah, for those of you who don't know, it gives everything 5k and double strike. Right, right. Uh, it's also can be also hit yeah. off your oh, chain attack or your chain attack trunks. Um, the last three drop is three ability unleashed ultimate Gohan. Um, this is kind of a concession. A fourth might probably be good, but it's also out of the three drops in my opinion. It's the it's the least favorable. Um, it's very good for fighting for board when you can get a draw and uh, off the pan trigger and get a draw for attacking a battle card. Um, force them to use another card. Uh, very strong for fighting for board, but it's the worst one in my opinion compared to the other three which is why there's it's only at three uh at the four drops we play two jiren and two sigma um <coughs> jiren's not as strong as he once was um he's very good in certain matchups like uh against apes and uh anything that tries to build up a board that you uh can just kind of fight for it with like i said this deck plays very defensive and this fights for board, so that's what you want to do. Also, always gets a pan trigger. Um, Sigma, this is kind of a, a unique pick. Um, this is very strong, in my opinion, against uh, veggies, uh, specifically Super Saiyan 3 veggies, because um, you don't have to play around Sagesh. 
but uh, what, what it does is uh, you can sack it and draw two cards in minus 10k to a battle card. So you would do it on the Kaba to kill the Kaba. And then he also gets the pan trigger, so it's like drawing three cards with uh, Sigma. Um, it's also a very easy card to side out going into game two and three if it's not relevant in the matchup. Um, and then the last four drop is four chain attack trunks. This is your power play of the deck. It drops all of these cards. Um, what it does is when you play it, you get to play another card with 1500 lesser tack. Uh, it will also get the pan trigger, and it also has a permanent that can attack uh, active battle cards, which means it can help fight for your board once again. Mm -hmm. um, we, along with the chain attack trunks, we also play two Zeno. This is very strong main decked. Um, it, it takes a lot of, uh, uh, in my opinion, a lot of skill to kind of play this card correctly um, because you want to play it when you're up on life. And so you play the defensive side mm -hmm. and then you hit this when you're up on life, reset yeah. the whole board, and now it's you're like in a- you. you're, Yeah, you're in a very dominant position. Um, oh yeah, chain attack Zeno. Zeno, what it does is when, he, when he's played, yeah. uh, he resets the field, resets the hand. Um, only him is left on the field. So the only thing that is different between you and your opponent after you play this card is your life uh, and your energy. Yeah. Um, it, do, it doesn't get rid of field cards, right? It doesn't get rid of, like, Planet Vegeta or uh, Broly's Broly. Ring, right? Um, but otherwise, it, it can be sided out. It is definitely a detriment that it has zero combo cost mm -hmm. or combo power. Um, that can feel like a, a big disadvantage in, in certain hands. Uh, but the power of the card is just worth main decking, absolutely. Um, and then the last part of the deck is a black package. We play uh, three Increasing Evil Mass Saiyan. Um, just more triggers to, to help awaken when you need it. You're not you're never trying to force yourself to awaken, uh, but it's always nice to have the option when it's available to take that fifth life and make a, a power play when you need it. Um, it can also get get rid of just some problem cards like other Jirens or other things that are hard to get rid of. It warps it. Uh, when you play it, you take a life and you warp it, so that's what that is. Um, so what I like to notice with this deck, you're playing really defensively, and you're uh, using the black to, to uh, overwhelm to be able to super combo early before awakening. Right, right, so, right, yeah. right. Definitely. So, so that's like one of the better overwhelm cards to play is that one. I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and put this out. The yeah. the super combo we play is the force black super combo. Um, so the black super combo I think is very important over the red super combo because it allows you to make use of it when you're above uh, four life, which if this deck plays, you know, if, if it draws perfectly and plays like it how it wants to, it'll have over four life and sometimes uh, six or seven life going into the sort of mid-late game. I've seen this deck um, win with, like, you, you having six life. Yeah, six, like, you seven don't have life. to awaken to win. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, and and yeah. so, yeah, what, what Joey was saying, this triggers the Overrealm really nicely because it requires four, mm -hmm. and then he himself at the end of the turn will go to the warp, which will make five, which will trigger the yeah. uh, the black super combo. So main reason it's in there. Um, mm -hmm. And then the last three cards of the deck are three time patrol trunks. Uh, yeah. Really amazing card Good. synergy with this deck. Um, first Not off, you're enough. never going to overwhelm it for three. You're always going to overwhelm it for four yeah. because this yeah. uh, the time patrol trunks itself becomes the fifth, yeah. and then it triggers your yeah, you're only playing six black super combo. So. Right. So like the, the, these are key to the deck. Um, seeing one of these to to, to start yeah. one of these, but I think six is the right ratio. Mm -hmm. Um, you see one, you're fine. Right, you, you see you yeah. see one, you're fine. The interaction with just... Time Patrol and Pan is really cool, too. Uh, absolutely. Uh, time Patrol, uh, the way Time Patrol and Pan will work is when you play Time Patrol, if your Pan Trigger is still up, um, you can, because they happen at the same time, you can choose in which, uh, in which order they resolve. So if you resolve the Time Patrol Trunks first, you can look at the top two cards of your deck, and then you can basically decide if you want both of those cards or if you want to dig a little bit deeper. So you can take one of them, put them in your hand, and then the other one can either go on top to get to get it with the pan trigger, or it can go on the bottom to then just see another card yep. if you wanted to see yeah. it. So very cool interaction there. Um, it's also very important on the turn you awaken, because uh, you want to awaken on your turn ideally to get triggers on both sides of pan, um, and this helps you do that very easily. Uh, like you you can you can be on four mana, tap out for a four drop, uh, play a big threat, awaken untap two, 
uh, play this, get another draw, and then you'll also be holding up Topo and Vegeta mana, which is really nice. Um, it's the main deck. That's that's the main deck. So we did play best out of three, so we have a side deck. Right, right. And this this main deck is to is uh, the the deck list is thought of with best of three in mind. There might be some other other things you might want to main deck if you are playing best of one format. Um, so the side deck, uh, again, this was a little bit different from mine and uh, the first places, but uh, three Haru Haru, this was the same between ours. Um, just an insane card versus yellow. Uh, we find that the yellow matchup is very much dependent on bloodlusts and how many bloodlusts you can make or force them to, to use so that you can threaten a chain attack Zeno yeah, for game. this card is really good for beating out Bloodlust. Absolutely. It, it baits out Bloodlust always, and even if it doesn't bait out Bloodlust, it also uh, it works with the strategy of what the deck wants yeah, to do, which put some. pressure on yellow. It's also really just replaces some. Right. It, it, it's 15, you, you draw with Pan. Yeah. Amazing. Um, Caleb played three uh, <laughs> Relentless Super Saiyan 3 Sun Goku. I played two. Um, this is a very good card against Veggies. Uh, or against yellow veggies um, because it gets around Sugesh. Uh, Sugesh Explosive Goku and Sugesh Kale cannot touch this card because of its permanent saying that it's it's like it's pseudo barrier. It was barrier before barrier was a thing. So it just has to be right, essentially. Um, we have. Oh, uh, I also want to mention that the Haru Haru has an auto trigger that can mill two cards, which sometimes is actually very relevant to getting to your overwhelm cards to, to turn on your uh, black super combo. Um, Awakening or Unending Awakening. I played three versus the three of these. Unending Awakening is. Uh, we found that the the de the defense wasn't needed in the majority of your matchups. It's why it's not main decked. Um, the, the Topos and Vegetas are fine, and it is a detriment being an extra card instead of a 5k combo piece, but where it was very much needed was against leaders that um, attack you over and over again. So like Trunks, uh, Mass Saiyan, and Vegeta. Mass Saiyan being the most prevalent one today. Um, you always want to do this when they have the crit if you don't have another negate. You just want to have as many negates. Um, can also be brought in against UI Goku just for more negates. Yeah, it's also really good at sudden death. <laughs> yeah, we, we played with some funky sudden death rules, but that's all right. Um, two bodyguard Leoric. Um, I really wanted to side a third Legic, excuse me. We uh, <coughs> Dota two game. Um, Leor uh, Legic is. I wanted to side three of them because I feel like that's when it's optimal. But um, the reason it's in its side is because we want to play it when we're going uh, first. Um, or excuse me, we want to play it when we're going second, but we don't want to play it when we're going first. Um, uh, and also against decks that have a lot of one drops, just so that you can always trigger this. The idea being that um, you can hold up a Vegeta on your turn one, but also play a Legic and get the draw trigger because it gets the draw trigger off Pan. Um, it if you don't it's know free. it, it play it plays itself for free if your opponent has a field and Cyber you don't have a field. Cyber Dragon. There you go, Cyber Dragon. <laughs> Um, two, uh, Mass Saiyan, the Mysterious Warrior. Yep. This card is super strong versus veggies. It's like we were talking about with this, it baits out Bloodlust. And if it doesn't bait out Bloodlust, it uh, kills Kabas and Khaliflas, um, which is going to put you ahead in board state. And, and that's very key for the veggie package to get going is sticking those Kabas and uh, Khaliflas. Um, Third best black card. It's it is it, 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 third really yes the good. third blessed black card. Uh, usually I would whenever I whenever I don't know how Caleb did it, but when I was citing out um, when I was citing into black cards, I would actually cite out black cards mm -hmm. because uh, you like, don't want too many black cards. You you want red red cards are primo. You never it really kind of sucks charging black cards, um, especially later in the game when you start trying to make multiple plays at once. All of your good red cards cost uh, two sometimes three. Like chain attack trunks is three red. Um, so it always kind of feels bad charging a black card or a non-red card, excuse me. Um, this was different. I didn't actually play this in my main deck. Uh, Miraculous Comeback Ultimate Gohan. I'd, excuse me, I didn't play this in my side deck. Um, but the idea behind this card is that uh, it's just going to be a game finisher when you need it, like uh, specifically against anything that plays blockers. Um, so Apes is the first one that really comes to mind. But um, 
anything, maybe any stray deck playing like a Yajirobe, or even if they want to side deck uh, Android 16 against you, I, I would m consider putting this uh, siding siding into this. Were there what what matchups did it really work out for you? Uh, <clears throat> the one matchup that it actually came in clutch was against Apes. It was against uh, Apes. Yeah, yeah. Right on. Yeah, yeah. But it, I didn't actually attack into an ape. He had a Bulma up, and he had attacked with it. Uh, For some reason. Yeah, sure. he, was, he was trying to bait something out, and he attacked with it and used a super combo to get out a... Probably like a 5k out of your yeah, hand he, or something. Yeah, he got something. Trying to get resources yeah. short. Yeah, even uh, if it's not good in a matchup or a certain scenario, it's still cheap and strong and double strike. Absolutely. In this, and uh, if you, uh, in game two and three, when mm -hmm. they're not expecting this card, it can definitely blow out games. Um, <coughs> For sure, absolutely. Like if they, for some reason, want to tap out, like if uh, they're playing a Kaba and they want to attack with a Kaba or whatever, you can punish them for that very easily with this card. Burn down a whole hand in a turn. And then right, right. Um, the last card we cited, the 15th card, is the third Jiren. Um, uh, you don't need a fourth. The third is to bring in against apes and... Um, Gonna check them. Yeah, uh, that's that's pretty much the only matchup I think it's really required for. Otherwise, two in the main deck's fine, and I actually found myself siding out Jiren a lot throughout this tournament. Um, yeah. So otherwise, thanks uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, Pan, best red leader, infinitely better than Khalifa. Don't let anybody tell you that. Um, well, congratulations. Do you guys have any shoutouts? Uh, shout out to the Dragon Ballers. AKA Dragon Ballers. Us. So we're shouting the team. out ourselves. Team, team Dragon Ballers. Team. Uh, local DFW. Uh, yep. Look forward to seeing. Uh, look forward to seeing us at more places, more local places. ARG Fort Worth, uh, and we want to travel to nationals next year too. So right. look forward to seeing us there. Um, Very nice. Shout outs to Epic Cards and Games yeah. for doing our video. I really appreciate it. Uh, put us on your YouTube channel. That's pretty awesome. Shout, Shout out, out to, to Andrew and Game Master. Andrew and, yeah, Andrew and Game Master. For this sure. was an awesome Woo! tournament. Woo! Yeah. I'm Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> this, this was an awesome tournament. Um, you know, we need more big, big local events, yeah. and they're providing. Uh, we were, we were at full capacity today, so that's that's a great indicator. Um, looking forward to more Dragon Ball. All right, thanks. See you guys later.